Let's hear from the board chairman of the Electricity Company of Ghana, Alexander Penyomakin, who's also the majority leader, giving details of the matters happening in that company. Take a look. There's a new board. And in fact, this is our second meeting. Oh, let me say, essentially, this is the first meeting of the board. This emergency meeting was the first meeting of the board. When we were sworn in, it was a familiarization. All right, this is the first meeting of the board. So I think that that's a misplaced position taken by him. However, I accept the fact that we must place our shoulders to the wheel for reforms. I mean, from outside and coming in, I think that ECG can be very efficient if we subject ourselves to reforms. And reform would involve engaging all stakeholders internally and communicating these to the external stakeholders. Our financial situation, uh, yes, we wouldn't want to become bankrupt. And Ben Boache is a secretary of the Africa Center for Energy Policy. Mr. Boache, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me, Alfred. So the board chair, as you heard him, is parrying away that call for the board to be dissolved, which except the likes of you have made. So it's a new board. They've not been in office for long. So why, why do you want them dissolved or sacked? We didn't call for the board to be dissolved. We are aware it's a new board. We talked about the management uh, exiting their job because they have failed to deliver value uh, to the Ghanaian people. We know the circumstances um, at the organization. We couldn't have called for the dissolution of a new board. You want the entire management, not Samuel Dubik alone? The entire management of ECG has to be um, dissolved, reformed, and um, replaced with efficient uh, management that can actually look at the, the circumstances of the people of Ghana and what ECG is doing to the budget of our nation and deliver value. And, and that is what uh, we are missing. And earlier I heard you question why people will be resigning. In fact, that's my and, next question to you because uh, Kelly Gajeko, when he resigned earlier in the year, said he was doing so for personal reasons. And Samuel Dubik Mahama, in his resignation this week, also in communicating to us, he says he was resigning for personal reasons. So, so what was what's happening there? No, I think my answer to that is that when people are poor at their job, regardless of what reason they, they give, we can only thank God for it. I mean, this is ECG that has grown in waste and mismanagement over the period, creating losses from uh, 295 million in 2017 to 9.7 billion in 2022. Uh, by the time we get a full picture of what happened in 2023, we're talking about 13 to 15 billion uh, Ghana cities of losses. Uh, that's how terrible they have managed um, the business. And therefore, I mean, we can only be thankful when such people exit uh, their job. And we have been questioning over time uh, how we have people managing an organization that terribly and not delivering value and the sub uh, the budget uh, keep paying uh, for this weight Alfred, the, the amount of money we spend on social investment um, capital investment in education agriculture health uh, gender social protection and all of that is less than 30 percent of how much we give to ecg to survive so ecg is bankrupt without the state uh, in, in in essence and it's a critical time for us to look at how we resolve that permanently and take that burden uh, of the budget. Uh, beyond the debt that we see in the books of ECG, uh, also other debt that are sitting with government um, that have to be paid and also contingent on the budget. For gas supply alone, we are in excess of uh, $500 million uh, of, of non-payment um, to uh, the uh, Standard Chartered Bank alone over two, uh, 400 million dollars of debt because e and i it draw down on lc's when gas has been utilized to generate power and no revenue is coming uh, 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 from there and therefore they go to our banks and then take uh, the guarantees uh, you know from the bank so that is how this whole sector has been managed and if ecg doesn't get its act together we'll keep sacrificing 
everything we have as a state um, to pay the electricity bill when electricity is just business everywhere. You have to sell, make money, and pay everybody in the value chain. But in Ghana, it's just been politics and not business. And we need to find a way to change that so that we can invest in our people. Politics and not business. I see the trend uh, graph uh, on the screen. And just for the benefit of you and our listeners on radio, in 2020, we saw just some 822 million gain or profit sort of posted there. It's been a streak of losses over the period. In fact, that was in 2020, I beg your pardon. 2020, it's been a streak of losses, 1.9 billion in 2021, 10.21 billion in 2022, and it's been continuing over the period till now. You refer to some over $400 million debt that ECG has on its books. Is that different from what the IPPs are demanding as well? The IPP debt is different um, from the gas debt um, because that is fuel. So the IPPs are owed for their capacity uh, uh, you know, charges and power that they have generated. But they also use gas that is guaranteed uh, hmm. by the budget, the government of Ghana. So if um, ECG is not able to pay for the gas, uh, government has to step in uh, to pay. And because of the guarantees that are actually aligned with those gas investments, um, they usually will go attack our LCs with um, Standard Chartered Bank. Even as we speak, we are at the brink of attacking World Bank guarantee. If government doesn't find money to replenish um, the, the the LCs, because not really when the LCs are drawn down below four uh, uh, 410 million or so, um, the World Bank guarantee should be triggered. I don't know why it hasn't triggered, uh, you know, at this point. There's perhaps some negotiations in the back end to avert that, but that would be dire if World Bank guarantee is triggered at this crucial moment, because we'll be next to Argentina to have done that uh, to have attacked uh, World Bank guarantees. I see. Now, what's accounted for this low collection rate of ECG? I mean, the revenue they collect for the power that they are distributing. Because the average collection as per the PRC's own document is about 40, 43% thereabout. They've not hit 50% be, before in, in, in for, for as long as I can remember. W w why is that? I think it's poor management. It's almost as if when ECG is handed to you, you do what you can do for yourself and not for, for the organization. Every decision you track is procurement driven and it's so inefficient that it doesn't generate value. I mean, two years back, we were struggling to appreciate why ECG will shut down its own application that it has developed. It has procured engineers in-house to build an app um, and you know, buy APIs to be able to sell power, digitalize their systems uh, and be more efficient. And suddenly, Management comes up one day and said that system is inefficient. Somebody has hacked it. People are selling power at the back end without the management knowing. And the solution was to shut down that system and outsource the service. I mean, the banks and all institutions of our time are building robust IT uh, uh, departments to be able to address their problems. If you have seen a problem, you resolve it internally. If people have to be sacked, you sack them and recruit engineers that can deliver value. But they decided to outsource the entire department to help them at an exorbitant cost to the company through sole source procurement. Where, I mean, we are now told by an agreement that we have seen that they were paying 171 million for the development of the, uh, the software, right? Mm. And the backend infrastructure that was required. 171 and million? Million Ghana cities for I the see. app. And beyond that, also, we have had communication from the company that developed the app saying that they actually got, um, you know, about $25 million for the development of the app. So the inconsistency alone creates a gap of over $300 million, uh, Ghana cities, because uh, over $200 million Ghana cities, I should say. Because if you convert $25 million, you are in about uh, a region of about uh, 350 million Ghana cities. And ECG says they have paid $171 million Ghana cities for it. So that inconsistency alone. We have to clarify it. Beyond that, cumulatively, the company will be charging as close to 3% every month for other engagements they have with um, payment systems, and then also their own charge of about 0.95% uh, of total revenue. There's a company that has developed an app for ECG, and they are staying on to manage the app, and they are charging 0.95% 
of every revenue that comes in. And imagine ECG collecting about um, a billion CDs every month. In fact, they're supposed to do two billion uh, CDs every month. Wow. And for managing an app that we are paid for, somebody takes 0.95 percent. And also bank transactions that the bank will go, th uh, the company will go through to transfer the money that they have collected on behalf of ECG to back to ECG. We are going to pay them about 0.85 percent of total revenue every month for doing that. So cumulatively, you're talking upwards 30 million uh, Ghana cities for the company uh, for delivering that service that was being delivered in-house uh, for ECG. And the worst part of it is that since the company took over, revenue accounting has been worse. They have I, not I, generated I, value to us. They have not increased revenue in any way because you look at the tariff adjustment. Um, ECG's uh, ta tariff for ECG has increased over 70%. Uh, in real time over the past two years mm -hmm. all right so for business as usual ECG should account for that adjustment in revenue right uh, before anything else but they tell us about the nominal adjustment in collection but not the tariff that we have actually adjusted mm -hmm. uh, 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 for them and then you benchmark that against increasing power sales because more consumption has happened we are consuming more power than we used to in the past two years they won't account for all of that all right, by just to convince the public that they are doing better by just collecting marginal uh, revenue than they used to, right. Right? which is not what we're demanding. We're demanding how much power you have sold and how much revenue should actually come uh, to be able to pay uh, the value chain. So Certainly. that contract is not performance driven. It's just collect revenue, whatever you collect, right. take mm -hmm. your share and give us the difference. That is not management. Mm -hmm. That is just screaming off. Uh, the state assets. And is this the, this the, is this the hap, haptel thing you're talking about? The haptel yeah, that's software? Yeah, contract. Uh, it's a matter, I have a few documents on my table on that one. So uh, we'll get into it. But you Mr. Bwache, uh, we're, 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 we're looking into it. close links to haptel. We're looking. Vice President Bao, we're, Mamu we're, Bao, we're, yeah. we're, we're looking into it. connection to haptel. We're looking into it. Do, uh, do, um, ben Boate, thank you so much for this yes. and thank you for this detail. Thank you for joining us here yes. on Key Point. Ben Boate, Executive Director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy. Also, Dr. Dominic Ayeni, I thank you so much. He is the Member of Parliament of, for the Bogatanga East Constituency, the former Deputy Attorney General, and a distinct lecturer of law in this country. Also, Dr. Adam Bona, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. Appreciate you. Uh, is also a, a security see, analyst, uh, and, and, and then also allow, uh, happen. Thank you happy. Thank you. You as well, lawyer Martin Pebu, Pebu number one, two, three, four. The nation appreciates for you for God and country. I am Alfredo Kanse. Have a great weekend and keep watching TV3 and listening to 3FM.